Well, hello, lovely humans. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, oh, also, hey, hi. If you're new here, my name is Jamie Wolfer, um, and this is my channel. <laughs> I have been on a meal planning kick for a couple months now. Actually, probably longer than a year now because we just had our fourth baby, which uh, I don't know if you can count, but that's a lot of children. It's like a lot of kids. And luckily, the littlest one isn't eating like real people food that much uh, just yet. Lots of bananas right? Lots of bananas. But I also run two YouTube channels, have two podcasts, have a little homestead, uh, and homeschool our kids. So while admittedly I may not be the most organized person on the planet, I find that when I can meal plan, when I can plan, and not meal prep, you know, not like the gym bros counting their macros and putting the same exact meal in like individual little containers, I'm talking about planning out the meals ahead of time. It cuts down on what I call meal fatigue. And that's the exhausting feeling that you get when you realize you have to feed humans repeatedly every single day, multiple times a day until the day you die. You know, and then at 6 p.m. and you're looking at your fridge going, I don't know what to give you to keep you sustained for tonight, let alone for the next 30 days. So I came up with a system that helps me to meal plan in a radically short amount of time. Don't believe me? Watch this. Without further ado, let's jump right on into it. So down below, I have a couple of links for you. One is going to be a link to this blank monthly menu planner. Another document you'll see down there is a weekly meal planner. And then the third one is going to actually be an entire month filled out for you with links to a lot of my favorite recipes in case you too are struggling with meal fatigue and you just want some inspiration. Or you can literally just copy and print this up and go off of it yourself. But instead of giving you a fish, I'd rather teach you how to fish so you can do this with your recipes, with items that you love, and make it stupid simple, okay? First things first, let's start off with the rules. Now, they're not like hard and fast rules. They're more like guidelines. Anyway, okay. But when I follow these almost as religiously as possible, I literally save time, I save money, and I save myself the fatigue that we all know that we run into right before mealtimes. Rule number one, meal planning starts in your pantry and in your fridge. This is tearing a page out of Jordan Page's, <laughs> see what I did that? Jordan Page's book, where when she meal plans, she will look at her current ingredients that she has to use up what's in her pantry on her shelves and in her fridge before she even starts her meal planning. So that's a fantastic place to start. So I personally love this method because that means I'm gonna go through all of my stores or you know a decent amount of it and see anything that might be expiring anytime soon so I can work that into rotation on the early end of my monthly meal plan. Rule number two, overlapping ingredients only. I literally will only buy things that I can use in multiple meals. The only exception I have to this is andouille sausage for gumbo because I make gumbo quite often and I don't really use that for anything else or like a one-off protein. Like let's say you have a random ham, you know? Of course, you know me, I'm gonna like probably make ham stock with it and then use the leftovers for something else as well. But, but if you were just getting started, do your best to make sure that every single ingredient can work for multiple meals. Cause that is going to keep your shopping list a lot shorter. Rule number three, pick days and or themes. So for us, every single Monday morning, we have yogurt for breakfast, okay? And that's, that's just how it's gonna be until I decide to change my mind or we pass. That's it. Or certain days we know we need easy meals. Wednesday nights are a difficult night for me because I sometimes have live phone calls with couples planning their weddings or with wedding planners starting their businesses. So I need an easy meal on those nights. Rule number four, shop sparingly. Once we make this list, we wanna make sure we're not going back to the grocery store. One, because if you have a case of the hungies and you go shopping, you could accidentally buy lots of things that you shouldn't be buying, like my husband. He can't be trusted. <laughs> and it also saves you the time of going to the grocery store, writing your list, all the things that are involved with grocery shopping in general. Rule number five, double up on meals. If you're already getting your kitchen messy, chop more carrots, chop more onions, defrost some more bone broth, get your chicken ready so that way you can make filling for two chicken pot pies in one sitting, right? Because it's all right there and that freezes beautifully. So anytime you can, increase a recipe either to use as a duplicate for later on in the month or to use for leftovers throughout the week, Take advantage of it. Rule number six, I kind of covered this earlier, but this needs to be its own rule. Plan for easy, especially if you're just getting started with this. You do not want to be cooking from scratch every single meal, okay? That gets a little bit exhausting. A lot of the meal suggestions that I'm going to have in this video are probably not going to be a lot of packaged stuff simply because that's a dietary preference of ours, but feel free to toss things in like a frozen pizza. And going with rule number three of picking themes, make it a Thursday night treat for yourself, okay? Plan out moments of reprieve, whether that's because you doubled up and now you have a freezer recipe that you can go to, or because you intentionally chose something that's packaged, easy to toss into the oven. Whatever that happens to be, do not overload yourself on cooking from scratch or a bunch of complicated recipes that you're not ready for. And as you're planning this, you're gonna wanna make sure that you go through your calendar app and in this notes section, write down any activities that you might be having that week where you'll need an easy meal. So now here's what we're gonna do. You can either use the ideas that I have listed out in the planned out monthly meal planner down below, or of course you can come up with your own. We can mix and match, like a little bit of my ideas, a little bit of your, I don't care. 
Okay, I don't care. Here's what you need. You need seven to 14 breakfast ideas, 14 lunch ideas, and 14 dinner ideas. You see what we're doing here? Yeah, buddy. We're only gonna plan for two weeks and then we're gonna duplicate it. Why? Because I don't mind eating spaghetti twice in a one month and neither do my children. It's when it gets repetitive, like back to back to back to back that they get a little bit annoyed, right? So unless you have some really particular eaters and you need to kind of make some adjustments for that, I highly recommend only planning for two weeks and then repeating. So for us, we kind of tend to do the same exact thing every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. Breakfast, I want easy. I want it done. I want it something the kids can do by themselves. I don't want to be involved in it. I want caffeine, right? And I want my mind restored to proper operational order um, until we launch into the day. Lunches tend to be a mix of stuff that the kids can prepare for themselves and or I can jump in and help out with. Again, we got a lot of things going on. So whomever can jump in and make lunch, fantastic. Dinners, dinners is my happy place, okay? I love cooking. I love being in the kitchen for the most part. <laughs> So that's usually where myself or my husband will take over those meals. And if you want to figure out how to put together just like a simple weekly meal plan, I'm gonna go ahead and link that video right here for you to check out. This video is gonna kind of build on top of those ideas, but I have covered all the concepts that you need to know already. I'll just leave that in case you want to watch me do just one month or just one week specifically. So remember, breakfast, easy, lunch, easy, dinner, slightly more complicated, but not that complicated. And generally speaking for our family, we like to prioritize proteins. Um, so a lot of our dinners will have a protein, a grain, and a vegetable. We tend to have fruits generally either with our breakfast or as snacks throughout the day. So let's get started with breakfast specifically. Now you can either pause the video right here and write down a bunch of breakfast ideas, things that you really like, or you can just go ahead and keep it rolling and I'll walk you through what we have for our first week of breakfast. Monday, yogurt, every Monday, yogurt bar. We have nuts, we've got berries, we've got maple syrup, we've got honey, a little sprinkle of sea salt. It's fantastic. And the kids like it because it's kind of interactive and I like it because it's kind of healthy. Tuesday, we have bagels. Wednesday, Dutch baby, which is fantastic if you are a sourdough queen. I love my sourdough starter. I use discard in this one. Also, it is a fantastic use of all of our farm fresh eggs. So if you are an egg lover uh, or a chicken lover and have, have lots of eggs lying around, that's a good one for you. Thursday's a cereal. Fridays is eggs and toast. Saturday, either the kids will make something or Elias will make something. And then Sundays we have church. So we just grab and go. Now for the second week, I'm gonna keep yogurt the same. On Tuesday, instead of bagels, I'm gonna write down English muffins. Wednesday, instead of Dutch baby, I'm gonna go for another round pie shaped meal and go for quiche. Excellent to make ahead, very easy. I tend to toss these together on a Sunday afternoon and they freeze gorgeously. Gorgeously, okay. Thursday again is cereal. Friday again is eggs and toast. This Saturday, I'm gonna have Elias make something. And this next Sunday, again, we're gonna call it our grab and go. Grab a protein bar, grab any leftover quiche, something like that, and just skedaddle out the door so we can make it to church on time. So I'm gonna list out all of those breakfasts right here for you to take a look at. You can screenshot them, you can write them down, etc. Now moving on to lunches. The first Monday, let's go and do paninis. Super simple, it's literally just a melted sandwich. <laughs> uh, Tuesday, pasta salad, very easy to throw together. Great way to get a bunch of vegetables in the kids. And I use a pre-made store-bought uh, Italian dressing for that, but of course you can make your own from scratch. For this Wednesday, let's write down ramen. We use homemade bone broth and like organic noodles. You can of course use the top ramen version if you want, but I try to make this pretty nutrient dense. Thursday lunches, I love, cause they're leftovers. <laughs> Always, every Thursday, leftovers for lunch. Kids love it so much. This Friday, let's go ahead and put quesadillas. Saturday, we can do hot dogs for lunch. That's nice and easy. And again, Sunday for lunch, we do leftovers as like an end of the week clear out. Following Monday, we did paninis last Monday, so how about this Monday we'll do a different take on a, another kind of sandwich. And then so I could either do a regular sandwich or I could do grilled cheese. But I like grilled cheese because that means any of the kids can kind of just toss it together and do themselves. Tuesday, we had pasta salad last week. This time let's just use spaghetti, just like regular pasta and a red sauce. Who says it has to just be for dinner? Toss that on in there. Wednesday last week we had ramen, let's go mac and cheese. They're both noodle based, right? There's, you're sensing the theme. Thursday, again leftovers. Friday, nachos. So the same exact ingredients we put in the quesadillas, we can then put on top of the nachos. So we're doubling up there. Saturday, we can do wraps. So I'm reusing the tortillas, but also using the ingredients from inside of the sandwich, but just putting in tortilla like wrap form, right? And Sunday afternoon, again, leftovers. Now let's move on to dinners. Monday night, let's have a stir fry. Tuesday night, we can do meatloaf, probably with some mashed potatoes. I usually always have potatoes on hand. Wednesday, we can do a pasta. If I've got vegetables, I could toss it in there, roast those. I could do a meat sauce. I like to keep this a little bit more versatile, but a lot of times I have live calls, so I like to keep it easy for Elias because he's got all four kids and the meal to make and no reprieve. <laughs> Thursday night, let's go ahead and write down chicken pot pie. One of my favorite, favorite meals to make. So easy, got a killer recipe for you guys. And again, a lot of repeat ingredients that we use with other items. Friday, let's do cracked chicken. and. <laughs> Although the name is strange, it is so addicting. It's chicken breasts with ranch dress or ranch seasoning on top and like cream cheese and bacon. 
So if you're worried about your arteries, like don't make it. But if you are worried about your taste buds, make it. Saturday, I tend to have a little bit more time, especially if we're at home. So I'm gonna put down pot roast for this. And what I love about this is it's the same exact ingredients as the chicken pot pie. Carrots, celery, onions, bone broth, protein of choice. And I actually will add potatoes into both of those. I know it's a little controversial to put potatoes into a chicken pot pie, but I find it personally delicious. Sunday night, the girls are usually gone with a youth group activity. So Elias and I will either just like eat leftovers if there's anything remaining after lunch, or we'll make breakfast for dinner, again, using up all those farm fresh eggs that we have. Or occasionally this will be our cheat night where we go out and get something just for us. Cause Silas isn't his like eat like a bird stage. So it's like, kind of like our little mini date night. Now we're on the following Monday dinner. Let's go and do fajitas. So that way we use up any of those leftover bell peppers from the stir fryer that we had the previous week. We always have onions on hand and you can do this either with beef or with chicken breasts. We tend to do ours with chicken breasts. And then it utilizes another one of our ingredients that we have all the time, tortillas. Tuesday, I'm gonna go ahead and write down gumbo. Again, same exact ingredients that's in the chicken pot pie and in the beef stew. Now it's in the gumbo. We're just changing the delivery service of, of the veg. Wednesday, I'm gonna do a whole roasted chicken and then rice and some sort of vegetable. For Thursday, let's do Italian sausage soup. It might be one of my favorite meals of all time. I just love it so much. I love it so much. So good. Friday, burgers. And then Saturday, let's do tacos. That can either be shredded chicken tacos or ground beef tacos. Both of those proteins we have on hand pretty consistently. Okay, quick check-in. We have two weeks of breakfast, lunch, and dinners all planned out. Again, if you work outside the home, you may not need to plan out lunches for yourself because uh, you might not want to be making that. I would just encourage you to make extra of dinner and take leftovers as often as you feel comfortable doing. But if you're like me and you work from home, kids at home, etc., this setup should help you tremendously. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to copy and paste everything that we planned out for these first two weeks. We're going to use again on week three and week four. Obviously, that gets us 28 days worth of meals. Now, typically what I like to do is for the last two, three days of the month, I will just start all the way over at the beginning because I don't mind having three of one meal in the course of one month. But of course, if you feel like you're gonna get tired of something and you don't wanna have it for the third time in one month, you can always swap it out for another meal instead. Once you have all this done, which by the way, hang on to these because these get so helpful month after month, right? In fact, I think I have like two or three of them sitting in front of me right now. You can then transfer them over to the weekly meal plan where you can write down what you need to check your pantry for, uh, what you need to defrost, and what you potentially need to go shopping for. And what you'll end up with is four weeks of weekly meal plans completely ready to go. So that way you can stick this on the front of your fridge where it's easy to refer to. The kids can refer to it. Everyone knows what you're eating on what day. And it's not this like super tiny, a little bit more difficult to read entire month that feels chaotic to look at. Meal planning for a whole month can feel so very overwhelming. Again, if you were just getting started, do just one week. That's it, just one week. Try your best to plan all the meals out go in one grocery shopping trip, take your time, write your list well, and then you can continue to build and grow from there. But as you can see, we are literally cheating, okay? We're only coming up with a handful of meals and we're repeating them, which makes your life easier, your shopping list smaller, your ingredients not going to waste because they could be used in a multitude of recipes, and that meal fatigue, she gone, sis. So that's all we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a go-to meal that you absolutely love, please drop that in the comments. Bonus points if you have a link. Let's help each other out because finding ways to feed yourself and your family is hard sometimes. So we're in this together. <laughs> Don't forget to jump on down there, download the blank monthly meal planner, the weekly meal planner, and the filled out 31 days of meal ideas for you to pilfer to your heart's content. And if you like this kind of content or need more help figuring out systems and strategies to like keep sane in your household, <laughs> and stay on top of all the stuff that seems to never end. Jump on down there, hit that like button, let, let me know what you'd like to see next. And as always, love you so much. Okay, and until next week, bye guys.